so this uh, topic for this session is about uh, picking a few of the development feature uh, the new feature that have been added over the java from java 10 to 17 uh, so currently what happened is uh, after java 19 onwards what happened is every new version of java has been released every six months so one release get released on the month of september and the next release comes in the month of March. So we can see, expect the next version of Java, this is Java 18, to be coming up uh, in the month of March this year. And here we're going to uh, look into not every and each feature of Java. Rather than we're going to focus on features uh, which are related to the language changes. Apart from that, there are lots of other features have been added like uh, API changes, internal JDK, GC, or garbage collection changes, uh, library deprecation. Along with that, there are changes happen uh, uh, which are maybe not be directly impacting the developer, but it's uh, always uh, impact that what are the APIs are available. And here we are not including the features that have been added as a Java 9. The so Java 9 itself is a bigger changes after the Java 8. Uh, and then we have like a separate session for Java 9 uh, with Java 9 uh, new features along with the modularity, the key feature that is added over Java 9. So today's uh, topic or agenda is focusing on the top six features uh, that have been added over Java 10 to Java 17. Uh, those are basically uh, depend on uh, local variable. Uh, we generally have a local variable we can define, which is uh, within a certain scope. And in Java, already the type inference has been added. That is, in generics, we used to have a type inference, like if we can have uh, what is a type based on the wildcat character, the type inference was there. And obviously, there is another feature, is which is known as pattern magic. Uh, so normally, what happens if we have like a base class, we look into the instance of operator and then we have to do uh, a casting and then we can use that particular object. So that pattern matching has been added to the instance of keyword that you can use. Switch is a age old statement that we had in Java previously. Now switch has been converted into a switch expression. Uh, text block is a feature that you find in many languages where you can have like a multi-line formatted text which was missing in Java, now it's been added to the Java. Records and silk classes, uh, records are basically, we can say it's a immutable class, but it is not a simple pojo. It has some restrictions. Uh, it is a final class also. So you cannot inherit that further. Silk class is uh, talking about how we can create a close hierarchy. So you're going to talk each of the features out here. Apart from that, there are also other features which are JDK related, which maybe uh, we're not going to discuss today, but we may have a future uh, session on other non-language feature. Uh, okay. So if you look into the uh, Java release cycle, as I mentioned, the Java release cycles has been going on every six months. So currently the Java version is 17. And uh, what happened is, uh, with every six months, there are some features which have been added to the JDK, uh, which have been over the years has been added. I have listed uh, the important feature, I have not included 13 Java 12, but I have included the feature that has been added over the period of time. Out of this list of features, we are only covering the six and it shows that whether the particular six has been actually made part of the standard feature so what happening now nowadays is the java first of the any new feature that have been released to the developers first the feature has been released as a preview feature so here the syntaxes or the apis are not final it gives out as a part of a release so that developer can uh, play with that and they can give their feedback based on that it has go through one or two preview cycle or release after that, it gets become final. So for example, Java 17 has a uh, pattern matching for switch, which we are not covering, but it's like a preview feature that has been released as a part of Java 17. 
So Java 10 after being Java 9, uh, which having this particular feature and Java 17, we're not covering anything. It has like HTTP client API, uh, some of the Sting API changes. So mostly it has been, we have like existing classes. There are some new method has been added. Java 14, we have like a switch expression, text blocks comes in a 15 and pattern matching. Though it's been there in the past couple of releases, but it has been uh, released as a standard version on 16. So we only cover this uh, six topics out here. So let's talk about what is local variable type inference or the bar uh, thing. Normally we know that Java has a uh, keywords, but um, if you introduce a new keyword right now, what problem the user going to face is that there's already that going to break backward compatibility. For example, if I say var is a keyword, if somebody using a var as a variable name, then it become a keyword. His code is not going to be compilable and he cannot appear to maybe Java version 10. So that's why this variables are uh, this. These are basically not keywords, but they are basically reserved words. Reserved words within a context. So they you can obviously use var still. So you can write int var, and then I can give ten or twenty. But I can also use var a variable name. Then assign it to certain values. Okay. So what is var? Bart is basically says that normally how we declare variables. First in Java, I have to give the type. I have to give the explicit type, then the variable name given is equal to symbol, then an expression, right? What value I'll have to set into that. Maybe int x is equal to 20, something like that. So instead of doing that, what is say that uh, value of uh, the data type of x can be derived from the expression, from the assignment. So if the value is 10, obviously it's in. So we can infer, the compiler can infer the type of X is basically int. So you don't have to explicitly say that it is an int type. That's where the var comes in. We can use var uh, not only in a local variables, that means within a method, within a uh, function, uh, and also we can use var uh, within uh, for each loops, right? We can also use var within the try with this whole statements. And where we define the particular variable, either in the uh, for each loops or try with resource or within the function, that is the scope of the variable. It is not going beyond that particular scope. So let's see some example. So now here we can see the var list is equal to array list integer. So compiler can look into the expression. Okay, what is this? This is an array list of type int integer. So it infers that it is of a generic type of list, which is a integer type. Similarly, now next we can add, they can again uh, use the stream API from Java 8. We can say list.stream. So it will automatically uh, assign that instead of writing stream of integer, we can simply write var. So now this type is inferred. This is like we are going over a list of integers. I'm having a stream of that. So obviously it's a stream values of integer that we are seeing. Like I'm saying the var is not a keyword. It's only a reserve word again within the context. So I can you still use var practically by using int, then var, then given a value. Okay. Similarly, here the next example var message, right? Here I give the variable type. This is basically quoted string. So that means it automatically infer this message is of type string. So there's no need to mention the string message, then the variable type. Similarly, I can here find that uh, I have defined an anonymous uh, class implementation that is account. And within the class, I have like a double balance zero zero. And then I can say var account. So it holds what is the type will be here we type inferred by the compiler is of account type. So it will be similar to equivalent of account 
type and then I can access the uh, field balance I can add plus hundred so where you cannot use var for I cannot use var in a method parameter so I cannot write function one var a comma var b okay neither I can say public var function one int a comma in b I cannot return either that neither I can in a class I can write class employee then I can run var age why you cannot do this because if you put allow this in the method parameter then var can be of any type right because there is no expression there is no limit what value you can put you can pass an object you can pass something else and that will the compiler may not able to determine specifically uh, which particular function to call or you may call this to uh, function with two integer you may call this to object you may call this to string but maybe the function is intended to work with integer similarly when you say return type var then also it will not work because you don't know what is the exact the return type that is coming up so you cannot assign the value of that particular function into other cases similarly the same logic applied to a field or the instance variable of a class another rule to the var is says that okay you are using var but you have to declare at the same time you have to initialize because without initialization we may not know what is the type the compiler will infer so compiler cannot infer something like what is customer null or what is customer those are basically equivalent statements so the custom uh, compiler will not allow that similarly you cannot uh, assign a var to a lambda function right so this is just lambda function you have two integer in your class in that so that is also not allowed so let's see some example basic example how we are using var there so here we have a simple var example here we are just having one class a customer so we can define just simply the same way the customer we can do that similarly as you can see i can use the latest uh, list of this has been added in java 9 we're going to be revisit this later on i have created a list of three names so i can also assign that into a var and similarly i can use the var variable within the scope of the for each loop and I can define the var also. Here the var, as you can see, it is automatically says that it's a list of string. It is already inferred. Similarly, here the name has been inferred as a string. So I can run this application. And I got to see the list of names being printed out. Okay. So any question on var? before we move to the next feature no sir okay okay so then uh, when why we need to use var uh, what is the benefit of using vars so here are some other examples right uh, where we cannot or can use the var of now var cannot be reassigned to a different type so for example here we have the name we have given the particular string and then later on we are assigning the values to a list of names so already the compiler inferred the name to be of type string so it is similarly say you cannot write string name and then later on you can assign to a list of values. so it will not going to be allowed that and also var means variable you need to always able to change the value you can always mutate the value of it so you cannot declare it either also as a final so let's see this i'm giving the example so here we have like a customer right you have defined the customer right now can i assign that customer is equal to can i do that no because compiler is saying what? Compiler is saying, okay, the required type, you already inferred, the customer is already inferred as a customer. 
because you have already assigned in the line number 10 that this is to be the customer. Now you cannot assign string to it. So that means this is equivalent to customer. We cannot normally cannot do that, right? We cannot change the type and assign something else. This is not allowed. Similarly, uh, what other example we have seen? R, now I put name. I cannot do that because there is no expression out there, right? And also, I cannot assign here null either, right? This null is same as this. There is no value I am not able to determine. Here. So I cannot assign a word. But same thing I can do with a string because here I'm explicitly saying that type but when I'm saying var the compiler has to determine the type when the compiler has to determine the type then it need to know at the time of declaration what is the expression or from what is the expression value from which it going to determine the type so that's why it is not allowed okay So, like we have seen, this is also not allowed. Another thing you have mentioned that I cannot make it final. Can I make it final? Here I say that I can, but it will determine giving a compiler error, right? So, I have to, instead of using what, I have to use explicit type. So why are you going to use var? So basically var is going to be reduce verbosity or clutter because we have to define the type each and every time. What do you mean by that? So if I don't use a var, what I have to do here, I have to give list string. And again, I have to give string as well. But then I have to find, okay, what is listing, what is this type is not required because I can get from this on the left hand side. What is this is about? This is a string of name and this is the name. So obviously this is a string. So I don't need to put here um, explicit types, right? I can easily change it to what and that really let me able to focus on what is going on with this piece of code, okay? So it's better readability uh, and we can you know remove the unnecessary type declaration so those are the benefit of using words that you can use okay so if you don't have any question let me move to the next example so can you anybody tell me what is that uh, instance of operator does? So instance of operator checks uh, means the new instance that is created. Like it checks the instance of like the class, the object, basically. So basically, instance of operator, as the name suggests, is checks whether an object is of that instance type. of a certain class or type. Type. Right? So that means in my code, what I can do, I can write in older Java, so this is a simple example. Here, uh, just write a few simple examples, for example, just to start with the basic. I'm just putting system.out.printed. Okay. Here I'm putting our main. Oh, 
name now given. Now, what I put name sense of team. Okay. So what should be the output of this? It will be output that okay, the name is the instance of the stream, true. so it will be evaluated to true. Correct. Fair enough. That's what the instance of does. It's evaluate whether an object of a certain type. Okay. So it is basically instance of a certain type. Okay. Now, say for example, this is the method. In this method, I'm going to detecting the type. So every object has been inherited from the object class, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just try to detect the object, whether the object is of instance of an integer. Then I'm going to say, okay, this is an integer. And if the object is of instance of a string, then I'm going to find, okay, this is a string. And what is the length of that particular string? Okay. So here you can see, here you have the object instance of integer. So this evaluate to true when I send this particular method a int value, either a primitive or a wrapper class value. Then it evaluates and it prints out this is integer because this condition become true. Now, when I'm detecting the type, I'm sending this as a 10, right? This is as a string. So when I'm sending this as a string, right? I find out this is a string. But here the object type I have sent into its object. So I cannot just put object dot length. I have to type cast with string, right? So I can put a cast operator before that to the targeted class, and then I put addition in place. Then I uh, then I call the length method and then I print this out. That means if I send this kind of a code, if I don't know what is the type, and if I wanted to send a base class, and I wanted to have this uh, object has been there, and I wanted to perform any kind of operation, I have to type cast to the child class before I can perform the methods or function of the child class. Correct? So here in this case, if I execute, then obviously I'm going to get first this is an integer, then this is a string with length three. Okay. So this type casting is required in Java. That is the only way that you can do. Now, what is the instance of uh, operator we basically use? Let's see the newer example. Okay, so here I'm checking that two objects are equals or not. This is the normal equal implementation. So when you're going to be find, we are going to determine whether the two objects are equal. Obviously, I need to determine whether the two objects are of the same type or not. Okay, so then what is that? other object I'm sending here, I have to check that type, object instance of my class. Then what I have to do as per the older Java, I have to then type cast it. Because when I do the equals operator, I basically use one or more fields of that particular class. And then I try to see if all the fields values are equals, then I say these two objects are equals. Okay. So here, this particular class having an ID field. So I have to equate these two ID fields to determine if these two objects are same or not. ID field here is the unique ID. Otherwise, it is false. So normally, in the as for the older rule, what I have to do, I have to type cast first this object of my class into a my class variable, or I can just simply type cast that, and then I call dot ID and then I compare the current object with this and then compare this together. Now, in case of a matching of other class, help me 
don't need to do any kind of type casting i can without the type casting after i put instance of sorry here will be together not separate so after we say instance of then i can have this automatically assigned to another variable of my class so i don't have to type cast and then put into a variable and then i can use the other within the if block because this variable scope is within the if block that you can see right similarly another example here i've sent the user i'm checking whether the user is a admin and whether it is a super admin so i'm say you instance of admin then i have this object u automatically cast it into a variable admin and then i put another condition beside that and admin is super so then it will return if the admin is super it will return true else it will not false so i can either use this in a if block or i can also use this with a person operator as well sir uh, yeah. why do you need to use admin admin uh, means only admin class uh, type can be used no 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 admin 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 mean here is a variable it's a variable so normally say i'm going to be having a simple class okay okay so here let's see another example so i'm going to determine whether a particular number is odd or even or whatever uh, i'm sending here object so object is an instance of integer then this int variable is basically a variable which holds the value of object that means it automatically typecast okay so that means if i write this same code in the older version say is odd old right so what i have to do I have determined, okay, fine. This is the in value. What I have to do, I have to say integer, okay, and then I have to say the variable, okay. Then I will be returning this. So what is int value here? Int value is oh, it's a variable. Cast to a variable actually. Correct. It's a variable. And here the scope of the variable is what within the if block where I'm declaring it. Okay. Because why cannot I do it uh, without type casting? Because I have seen the object itself. So I cannot perform arithmetic operation on it directly. I have to type cast into a value. And then I can perform the operation. But with the pattern matching of instance of what happening is, I match it to this. Automatically, it get typecast into an int value. I can give the variable name whatever. I can mean the variable name int value. I can say it's a value or whatever. So whatever this I name are given, this becomes a val variable which holding the value of the object and also it's been automatically typecast. So I don't have to write anything out here. I don't have to declare the variable, neither I have to do the casting. It is automatically done for me. And then I am able to write this. I can also combine these two conditions here together because this variable is available within a if so i can combine these two conditions together
Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. So here, when you say admin, admin, what is this? Ad this is admin is a class, and this admin is a variable. So what happen is from the user is automatically typecasted to admin, and it's assigned to this variable. And on this variable, you can perform a call any method or any operation, and you can write it as an expression, right? Which is evaluated to two and false. Okay. And the scope of is defined wherever the variable is defined. Here the variable scope is within the method, right? Here it is within the if statement. Now see another example. Now here and uh, just previously what is said that uh, the variable right it is the other right out here correct now here in this example if you just highlight this okay so what happened the object instance of my class other so other is basically holding the value of object which is automatically typecast and assigned to this value. If it is not of this type, then obviously whatever argument we have seen is illegal. So I'm going to throw an exception, illegal argument exception, right? I don't want the user to perform the equals operation on this. But then what he just discussed that, okay, this other is within the if block, how the other is available outside the block okay it should be within the if block right why it is outside it is outside because here you can see it's a negation operation is there that means if this condition is true this block will never be executed. Sorry, this operation is, if this operation is true, then this block get executed, okay? But uh, if it is false, then the other will be available outside the block of the code. That's why the other is available outside, okay? So you have just seen this example that we can have this, uh, combine this with the AND operation. So we can say the string s, and we can say that whether the length is uh, greater than 10 or something, correct? Uh, but here, uh, we cannot use the OR operator out here. This is not is in, in scope. Uh, can you guys tell me why this is not allowed? So because if one like if if that uh, object is an instance of that string, then if it's true, then uh, the other statement uh, should not execute at yeah. all. Because it is like a short circuit nature of this or, and an or right. So when you say and, I mean this block is true. This block is true. So ace is available, and ace is available to be used out here. Correct. And if I say it is or, so that means this block is never true. So no value of ace has been assigned. So that's why the ace is not available here. This is not going to be getting compiled. Okay. So any questions on the pattern matching or the smart uh, instance of operation? No, sir. Okay, so let's move to the next one. The next one we are talking about a uh, sweet expression. <laughs> let's see an example. Okay. So, we are all familiar with the sweet statement, right? Yes, what is a sweet statement do? It's uh, on a certain value, it has like one or many cases, 
and based on cases we execute one or more lines each of the cases are break from one of the other using the break statement if none of the cases get matched then we have a default statement right so here this function is doing what it's basically taking the day of the week and from the day of the week it try to determine what is the day and based on the day it will say what is we have on our today's routine right so different day have a different routine that we have and we have defined a separate variable that is routine and what you need to do we have to change the state of the routine on each of the block as per the our case may be now we can also combine the cases like for example sunday and saturday we say this is the time for our day off so we spend the day with the our family so that is the normal statement now here we have used uh, day of the week which is coming from java time package okay is just an enum instead of defining our own enum we can use the existing enum and it uh, gives us a value so we get all the day of the week names are written uh, we use the stream of from this enum value list of values and then we basically do the forage on it and from the day of week we come out and we print out and then we for each print we send the what is the name of the day and we print out what is the routine for the day and then if we execute this obviously our uh, good old uh, switch statement get executed and we get what is our uh, weekly routine out in the screen okay so this is like a switch statement now there is a different thing we are talking about we are not talking about switch statement we are talking about switch expression the difference between a statement and expression is that when you have an expression you basically set that expression value into a variable okay and you cannot assign something of a statement into a variable that is the difference so let's see are we going to again come back to the newer version of the switch expression rather not the newer version the switch expression rather um so what happened what is this look like this look like like this so this is an expression so it will be like a having like semicolon so here we say switch here we have like a multiple cases combined together we don't have to use colon rather we can use commas here we don't need to use colon neither we have to use break statement okay and then we can just use a simple lambda expression one or many lines we can just return the value the false or two or whatever and also there is a, another option is the yield to so return a value and this is we going to be using when you're going to be using uh, a multi line lambda body right so there we can you know uh, use this as a value that is written okay so that's how the switch expression changes so instead of there is no break now we can combine the multiple cases separated by commas and there is explicitly break automatically get added again something we don't have to do it is automatically get added default we can use or cannot use we need to use default when all the possible scenarios are not covered by the cases so here the day of the week have like a seven possible values so if we enlist the seven possible values we don't have to use default if we don't use that then we have to use the value default yield we need to use when you're going to be using multiple line of values again yield just like the any other var and etc is not a keyword it is a context based reserve word okay so this is the what is the example looks like right so let's uh, see the updated version of this switch expression okay now if you compare this we have written the same code now if you compare this with the previous one what we can see 
out here is the code is very much very much readable right you don't have the additional break you don't have the colon everything you can simply line a single line of lambdas you return the value as it is and you can assign the expression value into a variable and you can return the variable now here you guys can see we are not using default we are not using default because we have enlisted all the possible seven cases of this value, right? All the possible cases has been here. Now for Saturday and Sunday, we combine these together using a comma, right? So that's how we can combine. And here, as well has been this multi-line operation, we use the reserve word yield to return the value out of this block. So what we did uh, inside that, we check the days of week. If it is like a Sunday, then it's a movie date. If it is on a Saturday, it's a dinner date. And we stored that into a variable tax. And we return the tax. Also, we can who could have written that yield and then return the expression. OK. So that's the difference between these two. This is the previous one, and this is the new one. Okay, so if you can, you know, see side by side, this is how they differ from each other. So again, point to remember, this is an expression, not a change over the switch statement. And it has a, its own syntax to write this. OK. Any question on switch expression? Hello? Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh like there is no break statement so yeah if if there is like any uh like i want to break out of this code then it will happen automatically right yeah we have given a semicolon right when you given the semicolon this is the end of the statement so break is not required we can also give like multiple lines right we can also have like a multiple lines there we can use the yield Okay. Okay. So break is optional, not break is not required. You can write a single line or you can write a multiple line. When you write a multiple line to return anything out of the block, you use the yield. Okay. So again, the difference is it is an expression, not an Model. So you can assign it to uh, value. Okay. So let's move on. Okay, now, um, so that's switch expression. So the, another thing is that automatic break no fall through so there is no fall through is there every statement that you write right the fall through means we have forgotten to add the break right it will not going to be printing out weekly report it will always say weekly connect correct so no fall through okay next 
enforce this is this totally enforced by the compiler multiple cases we have seen we can combine and multiple matches also possible lambda for your cases okay now let's see uh text block so just to just reiterate the last two points multiple cases are combined separated by comma enforced by the compiler default is not required because we have mentioned all the cases if we don't mention any case then it will say that we require default so automatically compiler enforces insert default branch because you have not covered all the possible input values it is enforced by the compiler now text block what is text block normally in java right when you're going to be write any kind of text we cannot write multiple line text that is not possible okay similar example is that if i wanted to represent a json or a sql statement which span multiple line then I have to give an escape and they are not very readable. Okay. So let's see that particular example. Okay. So here, uh, what i'm doing is when i'm going to write the text uh, just just uh just let us create a multi-line example first example. now how can i write multiple line here multi-line okay Normally, I put a string, right? I say this is like a first line, put slash in, then I put say second line, slash in, then I put last line. Okay. Now, if I'm going to pin this, what's going to happen? Let's write this. It comes up. But again, it's not properly aligned, right? So for alignment, what I have to do, I have to maybe change the space out here, change the space out here, and then exit it again. Now it's properly alert so what i have to do i have to give right all this uh, specific escape character slash in out here right instead of doing this how i can do this alternatively instead of having like this way so what i can do i can put three spaces okay and automatically Have the margin is defined by our ID. Okay. So now it is very much readable for me than the previous example that you have seen. Now, if I execute this. Okay, it is coming up. Now it improves the readability because now I can see what is happening. I can see the first line, second line, last line. I've, it's automatically, you know, indented that by the ID. But if I do this, execute, whether the margin will be retained or not. Let's see. So margin is also retained out here. Okay, so that is known as a text block.
you have to use the three ports. Now it is very helpful to represent JSON SQL statement. There are some escape character. We are coming to that. So here is an example. Previously, if I need to write a JSON, I have to do. I have to uh, generally JSON has what? JSON has uh, single quotes on on the field. So I have to use slash there. Okay. Then I have to give the slash out here and then slash in etc. So it is not very readable. But the same thing now I can you know put very uh, proper way. And I can I don't have to do any kind of escape out here. Similarly, for SQL statements, I have to write like this: select start from users, semicolon, then slash in. But here I can easily can use this statement where slash s means a space because after start and form you have to give a space. And if you want to write it in a new line, you have to give slash, then that comes in a new line statement. So far, you guys are with me. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So let's see an example of this. Okay. So here we have the text box JSON example. Um, so we know that uh, we can use uh, Jackson Mapper. Uh, Jackson, which is basically a library. It has an object mapper, so it helps us to do serialization and deserialization. Uh, serialization means that you can convert the Java object into JSON format or any other data format, XML or whatever. And deserialization means from that it extends data format to Java object format, right? So you have created a simple class, say employee. And uh, okay, I'm just going to come back to the record, but okay. So this is just an object which has a two field uh, name and a year of joining. Now, when I execute this line, I am basically doing two steel lines that mean from the Java object, I'm converting into a JSON statement. Okay. And I have the JSON string out here, right? Without any quotes, slash. Etc. Escape character, etc. And I'm going to read the value from the JSON and convert it into the object. That is, I'm going to be doing deserialization. I'm going to print out these values. Let me execute this. So first one, print out the JSON. Next one, convert this existing JSON structure and read an object and from the object, it print out this object and then it get printed out. So that means whatever you know JSON structure I've given, it is much more easier for me to represent without any mistake. If I can simply use any kind of JSON beautification tool, I can simply copy paste and paste it out here. And automatically it out of the box, it works because due to the text block. Okay. Let's see another example where we're going to be executing a SQL statement against a database. So in my database, I'm using Postgres. I have a database named Reams, uh, which has a Reams user as a user, which has given the permission. And if the database in the under public schema, I have a table named users, and this table has a three rows, which has a int, age, first, and last name. I'm going to use simple JDBC to query this data. Now, for executing the query, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the text block to write SQL statement and execute this. So here I have, I'm going to be creating a, a DB URL, that is a JDBC URL for Postgres, which is running on localhost 4532 with the rings. I'm using this username and password, and then I'm writing the query. Okay. Now, okay. here I also can use the var in the tie resource block, right? So it is automatically, I can see it has input, the compiler input to 
collection connection statement and result set and here i'm going to be querying the result set looping it to get that int string etc and print it out okay let me execute that And I can see the result is coming out here of the database. So here I'm using the text block, and you can see that it is been properly margin. Here I'm using slashes. Here we are using two specific SQL uh, escape character. One is slash s, that is a space, right? So I can even write this way. I can not give a space, and I can add the space and a new line. Okay, let's execute this. Okay, so it's a valid SQL statement, and we can define this valid SQL statement using text block. Much more easier. It's much more easier for a developer to read through, and uh, there are less chances of any kind of mistakes. Okay. Uh, this brings down to our last two topic one is record one is sealed classes okay let's go with it any question on the text blocks no sir okay so one one yes. escape uh like uh, the so mm -hmm. can you go back yeah mm -hmm. sure Sir, so one escape sequence is for the uh, slash is that is for space, another okay. is for new line, another is for new line. Okay, yes. okay. so if you want, we can also print out this uh, statement as well. Okay, okay. execute this. This will give a space, and after that, okay, that is the next statement. Now let's move to the next topic that is known as a record. So normally in Java, what we need to do is uh, we need to create a data class, right? Data class means the class is only to hold the data or record or some filter attributes. Field values rather. Okay. So here uh, a new concept has been added, which is known as records. These records are basically immutable data holder class. Immutable means when you assign these values, you cannot you know change that to it. Okay. So there is no setter to change those values. You have a, like a constructor, you have getter, but you cannot change the value after creating the object. This way it is known as immutable class. And it holds the data. So it's a kind of an example of type tuple. For example, we have uh, like pair class that we wanted to represent, okay? So when you use the records, what happened is compiler automatically added constructor for us, okay? And it also added getter for us. So we don't have to write much code out here. And also implement equals method, hash code method, two string method, okay? But let's see an example. Normally, if I wanted to define a kind of a Java class, right? I have to define all of this. If I want to, I can define all of this. So what is I have to do? Okay. So here, if I say I want to define a class called person, so I'm going to have like a first name, last name, some private fields. Then I'm going to have like a private um, default constructor. 
then I have to argument a constructor, then I have to write all of this uh, getter, setter, etc. I can omit the setter if I don't want it to make the changes to it. Okay, I can omit that. And then for any kind of comparison, I have to implement equals, I have to implement hash code, and if I also wanted to implement two string, then I can implement that. But here you can say, OK, I have an ID. So what I have to need to do all of that? I can depend on my ID. Whichever ID I can use, either Eclipse, IntelliJ, whatever, it's going to be creating all of that. But again, these are, again, some boilerplate code. I don't have to write all of this, right? All I'm just holding is I'm holding two values in a class, in a class objects. And is there any way I don't have to write all of that? Either I'm writing or I'm generating, auto-generating from the ID. Okay. So in that case, what you can use, we can use records. Okay. So records help us to write this kind of thing. So if I wanted to use a record for this particular case, okay, so for example. Here I'm, uh, if I say, let's, uh, let me modify this record, right? So what I can do, let me just uh, comment this out. I'm just simply going to write record person. I'm going to take two things, last name. Last name. And there's nothing more to it. Okay. So what happens? I have not defined any two string. I have not defined any kind of equals method, right? I have not defined any hash code, correct? I have not defined any data setter. I have not defined any constructor. Neither I define any parameter as constructor. But this code is valid, right? If I write, it will get executed. And it will print out the string representation of this particular class. Similarly, I can, you know, get the individual values out of it. Last name. So here is, do remember, there is no getter, get as such, is rather the field name, last name. So I can also pin that. So getters are added. Two string has been added. Similarly, let me see if there are hash code is added or not. Obviously, anyhow, hash code is uh, going to come from the parent class. So, may not know that it is anyhow added or there. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. I create another person. And I say person two, right? And the same values. And I try to find out whether this person one equals person two or not. Because normally the equals operation of the object class is depending on the hash code. And it is not depending on the fields. Here the fields are matching. That's why. Is become equal. So that means the class specific implementation has been implemented out here. So if I again see the syntax, the syntax is very simple. You give a record. Again, it's a, not a reserve keyword. You give a record, you give the person name, you give the first name and the last name. So here within this, you define all the types, all the fields 
are there along with their types. So that will reduce uh, defining of data classes for me using the Cox. Okay. Now records having all of this given to you, but can you customize the record? Yes, you can. You can have your own constructor. You can override the in default implementation they have given for equals hash code and two stream. You can add method which is static. So again, the example is given here. It is record, the class name followed by whatever you know field type you're going to have and how many fields you're going to have within that particular class. And you don't have to by default provide any body to it. But you can always customize this if you want to add in constructors, add in static methods, or overriding equals hat code or two string. Here is an example what you can override. So, first one is that here you have like a oh, sorry, this is like a custom constructor. Here you have like a custom constructor that you have and you can always have a new option that is known as compact constructor as you have already defined here you don't have to define any kind of uh, default constructor of value or you can just simply have override the default uh, you know the two fields or the all the field base all argument constructor you can override and there you can write your own implementation if you want to you can also add your own static uh, values or static methods. Similarly, you can have additional custom methods as well. Like here we are getting average value, but you cannot hide getters. So you cannot overwrite getters, right? So here getter means mean and max. You cannot overwrite them. But rest of the operation are possible you can have your own custom constructor or you can change the default compact constructor that means that all argument constructor that is how which you have defined at the time when you define the record that is there okay so so here is a record and in this record what you have is you have overridden here we have overridden the compact constructor that is the double to double value constructor and then we just uh, implemented one custom logic inside that. so why do you need to override the constructor it's just uh, we are showing that we can override right if you want, we can override the constructor. Okay. So if you have any kind of business need to override, you can override that. That's all I'm saying. The key point here is that you can easily use record. in your case and you can print out those values if you want to and if you want to override you can override their compact constructor that is all the field that you have defined you can give your own custom constructor with a different argument list you can override equals hash code and then you can override your two string methods but uh, you can have also custom methods, static methods, but you cannot overwrite this. So for example, you cannot overwrite public double that you can overwrite if you want to. So that is also there. Another option that we have is temporary or the 
local record class so what you can do you can override your local classes you can have this record classes outside classes or you can have them within the function so here you are going to have a method where you are trying to find out what is the oldest family member of your family here you are sending stream of persons and then within the stream of persons you are having like record pwd is a class which is taking a person and his family member so it's a local record class its scope is within the function then from the stream you are doing the flat map and you getting the p dot family which is itself is a stream then you are doing the map converting if into pwf class and then you are trying to find out based on their age who is the oldest person in the family then you are converting that into map into a family member and if you get the family member you returning the family member or else you returning null so what is pwf pwf is just another record okay, okay. so just another you know class that you have right but what we try to see from this example that you can define this within your method so the record classes can be also defined within your local functions within your functions you can also define another key point is that uh, when you define the record location right can you extend this okay. let me give that are you saying that by default records are final okay so you cannot inherit from the record so record is a final class so we can say it is nothing but a final class uh, obviously here uh, the sync it so it is we can say it is equivalent of a final class that's why you cannot extend it further. So those are the basically uh, key part for your record. Now the last portion is the shield classes. Um, so normally when we define class hierarchy, we have a, like a parent class, then we have a, like a child class, right? And either option is that you can make your class as an abstract class. So when you make your class abstract class, you have to, you can inherit that into one or more child classes, okay? Or you can make your class as a final class. That means you cannot inherit that, right? But there is uh, no other option there that you can let this class to be inherited to a certain set of classes. So that middle path or middle ground option is not available within the Java before the shield classes. So that means when you have the abstract class or interface the thing is that it is always can be open to inheritance you cannot you know ensure that your class can be extended to maybe other certain classes but it cannot be further extended okay maybe it can be extended within your uh, package but it cannot be extended beyond that okay so that you cannot control. So here again, 
shield class is been added which is uh, been added as a again not a keyword rather shield is a uh, contextual reserve word which you can use before a class or before an interface so what happened when you define that in a class or in an interface okay okay so i have defined a class interface rather named shield so shield here allowing me saying that you can extend this class extend this interface rather okay for now let me just cut this one you can extend this interface for now and let me also comment this one Okay. Then I'm saying that I have shape. Shape is a shield interface, so it can be further extended. Okay. Fine. So when I can extend, so obviously I can extend this um, into this file. So when I extend this, can I make them as a non-final or not? So let's just go step by step. Okay. It says that it's a shield class, and when you're going to be extending further, the class that you have mentioned, you need to mark them as final. Okay, so that means you should not be able to extend it further. Okay, now let's say if I'm creating another. Of defining out here, I'm taking this out and placed in a another class. But the next rule it's saying, okay, you have marked this as a shield. So whoever going to be extending this this interface or into a class or whatever, they need to be final. Okay, I make it final, but I moved into a separate class. Means source file. So that is not allowed. So you have to place it within the same class. Okay. So that means you can have this as a final, this as a final, etc. First rule: when you make it shield, either interface. Okay, I have given this as an interface. What I change this to a class. I change it to a class. And obviously, I have to use extend keyword, right? So that means it can be either an interface or it can be either a class which is shield, but it can be extended to the next level. But when you extend to the next level, it needs to be final. So they are basically closed for inheritance downward right okay fair enough now if i'm say i wanted to define this into a separate source file okay then i have to use the keyword permits so permit says okay you can extend this but in a different class but tell me what are the list of classes this class or interface are going to be extending further so you give me the list of permitted classes in which i can extend this further so in that case what i can do i can you know take these classes i can cut it off and then I can put them classes under here. 
then let me allow to extend this or define those permitted classes into a separate file okay so that you can do that i can do out here that i have done okay now the second rule so that this up to let's just clear out this so what is saying what is the do and don't with that you can extend this into a final class or you can again further extend it into another shear class right so can i make one of these as a shield one what is saying shield class must have a subclass okay so let's not do right here let's just add another one so when you're saying that okay you may be shield whenever you have a, like a shield class that you define you have to give it at least one or more assets again find that So again, you can have it. Now again, so okay, I've added to the particular shape list. I added another class. So this class, I can extend it further. I can extend it into a different source file. But can I make it shield? Okay, I can make it final. Obviously, can I make it shield? That means I can allow it to be extended further, provided the next set of classes are extendable. Okay, and they are final also. So I can define a shield, but then it's going to say, okay, you say this is like a shield, right? Then at least let us know what are the at least it should have extended to one single class. So here it means extended to one single class then that satisfied to the compiler okay it has been extended so let it be as a shield okay so that means it can be further be extended but that class will be final it cannot be further be changed now if i say non shield that means what that means it can be Further extended, and then can I remove this final? Yes. So that means I can remove this as a final. Whether I can make it like this way, okay? I can make it non-shield. So I will let it be available to extension, and there is no compiler check going to be there to check whether it has been further extended or not. Only shield classes should be extended further. So again, when I'm saying non-shield, that means I'm letting it from closed hierarchy to the open hierarchy. So it just becomes a normal class which can be further extended in whichever uh, length if you want it to. Okay. So that been done. So what is permit lets? We already seen that permit let us to define multiple source files. You can have like one class in one source file and the other uh, final classes into other source files, right? Now they need to be into a same package. Okay, you see that currently they are into a same package. So they are all into a shield package, right? So let me add another package. Okay, let's try to move one of the class that is square, which is from shape 
can I move to out here? Let me refactor. So it says that following problem was found. What it says? Okay. Uh, so fine. Continue. Let us continue. So here I'm able to extend it. But here I got the error. Okay. I make it public. That's okay. But now this is not allowed. Okay. Class is not allowed to extend shield class from another package. Because I moved it, this class is under shield, right? And within the shapes, I say, okay, this can be extended into four classes. Fine. So I can have them in the all the separate classes if I want, separate source files. But they are still now within the same package. But when I say, okay, I moved into a separate, the source files into a separate class altogether, separate package rather altogether, then what it says, okay, you make it public, you make it everything, that's okay, but it's not going to allow you. So it's not allowing us to move to a different package. So that is not allowed. Okay. Now, what do you mean by unnamed module or what do you mean by a same module? We're going to discuss when you're going to discuss the modularity with Java 9. Okay. So these are the examples. Uh, since the shield is that particular reserve word and then you have the permit. So you define in a one single file. If you have to have the permit, then you have the option to define them in a different source files, but they need to be within the same package that is required. Then if you want, you can make them non shield, but when you define them, it need to be final. But if you don't want to define them a final, you can make them as a non shield. So when you define as a non shield, it can be again extended to any number of classes if you like, it's just become a normal hierarchy, right? And if you also can define as a shield, then when you define as a shield, at least you have to define which at least you should have at least extended into another subclass. You can define that another subclass within the same source file, or you can also use permit here and define it in a different subclasses if you want to. Okay. Another is that how the shield classes are different from enum. So enum is what? You have a limit number of instances, right? They are basically same implementation, object of same classes, different values and limited number of instances that is there. Shield class is that you have a, like a different implementation. Okay, so shield class is used to uh, define known set of domains. So when you know beforehand like what is your child classes will be then you can use the permit keyword and then you can restrict this to the list of known domains but if you don't know then you better use non-shield or normal classes in your cases uh, this we have seen uh, shield classes also can be used with record because why because records are also final class so you can use the same thing with shield classes as well. So here the shape has been extended into the rectangle and triangle circle, and then you are defining as a record. So that is allowed because records are by default final class. Uh, so benefit is if you are doing anything automatically compiler do to the check, it is better for known domain or limited domain of subclass modeling. It allows you to do close uh, hierarchy modeling. So you have a control like which are the classes you can uh, let it be further extended. And in future, maybe we can get pattern matching on the shield classes in future Java releases. So any other questions you guys have of 
all the topic that we have so far sir can we can we means get this pdf or yeah i can share the code source code as well as a presentation and also the recording okay sir uh, any other questions you guys have at this present moment uh, uh, which portion you find that you're not okay. going to get it to or which portion was difficult or which portion is much more easy compared to other i'm just stopping the presentation for now